Mixed Reality Toolkit is the open source project where you can find foundational building blocks and common instruction patterns and the UI controls. So when you visit uh, Mixed Reality Toolkit Unity GitHub, on the landing page, you can find uh, some of the feature areas and uh, important example scenes. So for the past several months, uh, we have been adding many useful building blocks to MRTK, and so I picked up some of the most frequently used uh, interaction patterns and UI controls. So for these building blocks, uh, I want to do a quick intro, and you're going to learn where you can find the examples in and how you can apply it to your projects. So let's get started with input. So whether you are designing apps for HoloLens and immersive headset, you need to set up a proper input to get the gaze cursor, uh, gesture input, and the motion controller work in your app experience. So uh, MRTK makes it very easy. So these are two uh, great example scenes you can start with. Uh, under examples, input, and scenes folder, you can find uh, input manager test and the motion controller test scenes. So when you import uh, MRTK a release package, uh, or if you clone it from the GitHub and open it in Unity project, you're going to find this menu called uh, Mixed Reality Toolkit. And under there, you can find this new menu, uh, Apply Mixed Reality Scene Settings. So that menu uh, automatically applies the uh, crucial uh, components such as Input Manager, a Mixed Reality Camera, and the Default Cursor. Of course, you can manually uh, find and add these prefabs uh, through the project panel. Uh, then when you search Mixed Reality Camera, you're going to find these two different cameras. Um, the difference is this Mixed Reality Camera parent has some additional components, uh, such as a motion controller, a teleportation, and a boundary to support immersive headset. And Mixed Reality Camera prefab uh, automatically detects the device type. So uh, it optimized uh, these options for both HoloLens and immersive headsets. So you can use this uh, single prefab for uh, both projects. And these are some of the other uh, properties that you can customize. Uh, for example, you can uh, easily override the motion controller model with your custom 3D model. Or you can also uh, customize the floor uh, visualization and the gaze cursor design. Uh, so let's take a quick look. So through this menu, uh, apply mixed reality scene settings. Uh, when you click it, uh, this new scene uh, is now filled with these three components, uh, mixed reality camera, uh, input manager, and default cursor. Then for demo purpose, I'm adding a coffee cup object in MRTK. When you hit run, uh, you're going to get this uh, default gaze cursor working with the gesture input. And of course, the same scene uh, runs on immersive headset with uh, this motion controller and pointers. And when you look at this motion control prefab under camera, you can easily uh, customize this model uh, by checking that always use alternate model and just drag and drop your uh, custom model prefab. Then when you hit play, then you're going to get uh, this uh, motion controller replaced with your custom object. So it's uh, super easy to uh, override those models. Uh, Interactive object and receiver. So interactive object examples shows how you can uh, make an object interactable and uh, respond to the standard interaction states. So in mixed reality, uh, anything could be a button. Uh, it could be a coffee cup or a balloon uh, that can trigger some action. So it doesn't have to be a rectangular, flat, square 2D button uh, that we have been using in 2D world. And in mixed reality, it is important to provide proper visual feedback so that uh, people can understand which object is interactable in the scene. So you can find this example scene under Examples, UX, and Scenes folder. The name is Interactable Object Example Scene. So to make any object interactable, uh, you can use this series of scripts called Compound Button. Uh, so it, these are kind of the modular scripts that uh, represent different types of interaction behavior. So you can uh, mix and match these, okay, animation, text, icon, mesh, uh, sound, and speech. So using it is quite simple. On any object, you can just uh, mix and match these uh, scripts, uh, then adjust the properties. So let's take a look. So I have this cube, and I just reduced size a little bit to 0.1 size. And 
I'm adding this compound button mesh script to play with the properties of the mesh, and I'm assigning correct collider and transform. Then I'm assigning a new profile. Uh, the profile is to use to control this theme for multiple objects here. And now you can see these properties for uh, these uh, different interaction states, such as pressed, targeted, interactive. And now I'm updating the scale value to make the object a little bit shrinked for the press state and a little bit bigger for targeted states. And you can also assign the different colors to these uh, interaction states. Then when you hit play, then now you can see uh, the object is responding to the different interaction states with a proper uh, visual response. Uh, uh, interaction receiver is another useful utility that you can use with the uh, interactable object. Uh, so just like this diagram, uh, you can uh, handle uh, events from multiple objects in a single script, in the receiver script, and do something. So using it is quite simple. Uh, you create your own receiver script that inherits from the interaction receiver, then assign this interactable object to the interactable field in this receiver script. Uh, then using this uh, game object, OBJ, you can identify which object triggered the action. So it's a kind of convenient way to handle events uh, in, from the multiple events, uh, multiple objects. Uh, next, bounding box and app bar. So the bounding box and app bar is the standard interface for manipulating objects in Windows Mixed Reality. So with this single interface, you can uh, move, rotate, and scale uh, this object. Um, and this app bar is uh, used to display the contextual menu to these objects. So in default, it displays a hide, adjust, and remove button. So you can uh, enter the gizmo mode, or you can remove the object. So you can find the example scenes under examples, UX, and scenes folder. The name is a bounding box gizmo example. So to use it uh, on any object, uh, just assign this bounding box rig script. Then you're going to get this bounding box and app bar. Then uh, that 200 mani manipulable script is optional. So if you want to make the object uh, interact with uh, two hands, you can combine with those script. So this is a result when you just assign the bounding box rig script. So I have this coffee cup, and I'm assigning bounding box rig script. And I'm assigning this bounding box uh, basic, which gives you, gives you the blue wire visualization. Then you're going to get this app bar. And when you enter the adjust mode, then you're going to get this gizmo interface for uh, scaling, rotating uh, objects. Then I'm, you can also combine with a hand draggable or two hand manipulable script to make it uh, manipulable with uh, using two hands. So in this example, I change the option to move, rotate, and scale. So now the object is uh, manipulable using your both hands. So you can move, rotate, and scale uh, even without entering that the adjust mode. And you can combine with uh, your uh, two hand gesture and uh, that gizmo interface for the fine tuning. And also, it provides some options like a scale rate, so you can make the gizmo more sensitive to, uh, to your hand input. And in the app bar, you can also add your uh, custom buttons. So when you search app bar prefab, and you're going to find this, uh, the buttons field, and you can uh, define your custom actions to this object. So it's a nice way to leveraging this kind of standard interface. Uh, next, 200 manipulation. So two-hand manipulation script allows you to uh, interact with the object using your both hands. So you can uh, move, rotate, and scale just using this simple script. Um, uh, this is the kind of uh, the interaction behavior that we introduce in uh, RS4 HoloLens, as well as uh, the immersive headset, the Clipbox. So as you can see, uh, this script works both with the hand gesture in HoloLens and the, with the motion controllers in immersive headset. So you can find the example scene under examples, inputs, and scenes. The name is two-hand manipulation test scene. So to use it, uh, you can just simply assign this two-hand manipulable script. Uh, that's it. Then you're going to get this uh, option such as uh, manipulation mode, where you can uh, specify the, the man manipulation type. So you can just make the object scalable using two hands, or you can make it move, rotate, and scale. 
You can also assign the rotation constraint so you can make the object only rotate along with the specific axis. So again, I have this coffee cup here, and I'm assigning two hand manipulable script. Then when I hit play, then you can interact with object using your both hands. So in default, uh, it is scale only, but uh, you can change the options to move, rotate, and scale. And I'm assigning the bounding box basic, uh, which gives me the, that blue wire visualization on interaction. So now it is uh, movable, rotatable, and scalable. Then I change this uh, rotation constraint, so now the coffee cup is only moving along with that y-axis. So this is a quite simple uh, script that allows you this two-hand manipulation uh, behavior. Uh, next, object collection. So object collection, uh, with this script, you can uh, lay out object, or array of object in 3D space easily and quickly. So you can uh, easily construct this kind of uh, three-dimensional uh, grid system. So you can uh, specify the surf surface types, such as uh, sphere and cylinder and plane. Um, so you can find the examples in under examples, UX, and scenes. The name is object collection uh, example. So to use it, uh, create an uh, empty game object and add your object, the multiple object, into it as a child component. Then assign uh, this object collection script. Then you're going to get these uh, multiple options. Then you can uh, specify the surface type, uh, number of rows, and cell width and cell height. Then when you hit that update collection, then you're going to get this layout. So in this example, I have multiple coffee cups on this game object that has object collection scripts. So you can play with the uh, uh, surface type, radius, uh, cell width, and cell height. So you can easily construct this kind of uh, grid layout. And in this example, I'm adding the holographic button prefab, which is uh, part of MRTK. So I'm just duplicating multiple of them. And now I'm hit update and playing with the, the spacing between the items. Then you can easily and quickly construct this kind of the, the holographic uh, UI panel uh, using this object collection. So, of course, you can do this uh, in, the, in the script in the real time so by just calling that update collection uh, method. Uh, next, server. The server uh, system allows you to combine multiple uh, types of object positioning behavior. So this start menu is a really great example that shows uh, this kind of multiple behavior combined. So this start menu, when it collides with uh, other objects uh, or surface, then it moves back and forth, but it maintains the scale by automatically uh, scale up and down. And also, it always follows me. Um, so in MRTK, we have a simple uh, tag all script, but uh, if you want to combine multiple object positioning behavior, uh, the server could be a good option. So you can find the example under examples, utilities, and scenes. The example uh, name is a server example scene. So to use it uh, on any object, you can assign these uh, scripts, server scripts. You can mix and match for your purpose. So, so we have a uh, server body lock, constant view size, uh, radio view, surface magnetism, and momentumizer. So this is a one example I'm using server surface magnetism use with a spatial processing example. So as you can see, uh, using this server surface mechanism, you can make any object uh, snap to physical surface and align with, with the surface with a more smooth motion. So as you can see on the inspector panel, you can play with lots of options like uh, lerping time and minimum and maximum distance and the facing behavior. So really uh, one way to play with the physical uh, surface. Another example, uh, server radio view. So using this script, uh, you can make any objects stay in your uh, kind of certain spherical range. So you can uh, also play with the lerping time and distance and the view degrees. So this example shows uh, how I made this uh, floating toolbar always uh, stay within a certain range. Uh, server body lock is another, another useful script. Uh, so Using this uh, script, you can make any objects uh, stay, uh, stick to your body with a certain uh, offset. So this example shows uh, 
I'm making this uh, floating toolbar always stay uh, below my chest uh, area. So yeah, that was server. Uh, next, voice command. Move this. Here. Bigger. Bigger. Smaller. So voice command is a uh, really uh, natural way to interact with the uh, object in Windows Mixed Reality. Um, so when you play with the HoloLens or immersive headset, uh, Windows Mixed Reality shell provides some of the default commands like uh, select, close, uh, bigger, smaller, and move this or face me. Uh, but using MRTK, you can uh, define your custom keywords, uh, this voice command in your app experience easily. So you can find this example scene under examples, input, and scenes. The name is speech input source uh, unity. To use it, uh, so simply add this speech input source to your scene, uh, this script. Then you're going to get this, uh, this inspector panel uh, where you can define your own keywords. So you can uh, define your voice command here. Then on object that you want to uh, trigger something, then you, create, you can create this uh, script that implements this iSpeech handler. Then finally, uh, you can implement this uh, on speech keyword recognize and do some action. Uh, next, spatial understanding. The spatial mapping and spatial understanding is the, one of the most exciting features in HoloLens. So you can analyze the environment and identify a specific surface type and you know, place your content on, on this physical environment. So you can really uh, make uh, awesome experience leveraging this, your physical environment as a, as a canvas. So in MRTK, you can find uh, three different example things. So spa spatial mapping, uh, spatial processing, and spatial understanding. The spatial mapping is the, the most basic one. So you can uh, simply uh, drag and drop a spatial mapping prefab into your scene. Then you're going to get this uh, basic the visual mesh of your physical environment. So this visual mesh is a little bit rough, but you can uh, easily you know, play with the content. But this could be a little bit uh, rough when you want to make your character walk on surface, then sometimes there could be a hole or bump. So if you want to uh, access more uh, clean plane, then you can use this spatial processing example. So basically, this spatial processing example shows how uh, you can convert these vertices into planes. So you can uh, get these more clean planes for the walls and ceilings and plane, uh, tables. Then uh, spatial understanding is the most sophisticated one. So that Example shows uh, how you can do the room scanning and uh, how you can interact with the identified surface, such as uh, floor and ceiling. And using this technique, you can place your hologram or object onto a specific surface type. So if you want to attach an object to the ceiling only, then you can do that. With the, you can also identify the size of this uh, space area. So this is a, one example I'm using spatial processing. So after initial scan, uh, it gives me these uh, identified planes. Then you can interact with this surface. Now I'm uh, dropping some coffee cups. So hopefully I don't spill too much. Uh, so of course you can make this uh, plane uh, transparent so that you can make it look like uh, you are interacting with the physical environment. So yeah, these are spatial uh, processing, mapping, and understandings are a really great example to play with. Uh, next, attached controller. So uh, using this attached co uh, to controller script, you can easily uh, attach an object to your motion controller. Um, so you can find a great example on our, uh, one of our Mixed Reality Academy tutorial. Um, so you can find the detailed examples of uh, customization and uh, attaching object to the controller. Um, in MRTK, we have this simple script called uh, Attached Controllers CS. So using this uh, on any object, if you assign this script, then you're going to get this option such as uh, uh, handiness. So you can select uh, left and right controller. And you can also specify specific uh, parts of the controller that you want to attach to, such as touchpad or pointing pose. Um, so then you can easily achieve something like this. I attach this color wheel UI on top of this uh, touchpad and leveraging that uh, access data to select the color. Um, 
So the MRTK standard shader. So this is the new shader that has been added to MRTK. And with this shader, you can achieve uh, various types of effect, uh, visual effects, such as glowing border, uh, hover lighting, and animated uh, properties. So you can uh, easily achieve uh, the fluent design elements, such as light, depth, and material. Um, the great thing is that this is uh, kind of optimized for HoloLens. For, uh, it runs on 60 frames per second on HoloLens. Um, so you can find this example under examples, standard shader, and scenes. The name is material gallery. So in this material gallery, you can just grab the material that uh, you want to use and apply it to your project. Um, so I have this cube here, and I'm creating a new material. Then I'm changing the shader to this new shader, mixed reality toolkit standard. Then I just assign this new material to the cube, and you're going to get these options such as uh, rendering options and fluent option. In default, it has uh, this whole lighting is turned on. So when you hit play, so when you hover with the gaze cursor, then you're going to see this uh, hover lighting effect is on on this object. And there are a lot of other options you can play with. So you can override this hover lighting color. So in this example, I just assigned the pink magenta color. And you can also play with the, this border. Uh, so you can control the thickness and the smoothness. Um, so you can easily make this kind of glowing border uh, on the object. And yeah, there are other options such as inner glow. So you can quickly uh, achieve this kind of visual effect uh, with the performance. So these are all available in the single shader. Um, and this is another useful one, the so rounded corners. These are all procedurally generated uh, shape. Uh, another great element in this shader is uh, being able to achieve uh, smooth fade out for the near clipping distance. So by uh, adjusting this near clipping distance, and you can make the object uh, smoothly fade out uh, when you or get close to it. So when you look at the shader option, there's an option called uh, near plane fade. That makes, you, uh, makes the object starting to fade out from a 0 0.85 uh, distance meter, which is a recommended value for uh, comfort. So this demo shows uh, the left one was the smooth fade out, and right one was the default uh, hard clipping example. So yeah, those were kind of the useful building blocks that I wanted to introduce uh, this morning. Um, so Mixed Reality Toolkit is the open source project uh, driven by community. And we've been working with amazing developers outside of Microsoft. And it keeps growing. And we, with the new MRTK version next effort, we'd like to invite you to join the community and to make it better together. Um, so there are multiple ways you can contribute to MRTK. Uh, of course, you can just simply use it. And if you uh, have an issue, you can file a bug. And it would be nice if you can suggest a new feature or improvement. And of course, it would be amazing if you can implement a new feature or bug fix and uh, submit the pull request. Um, so this is a kind of the typical GitHub contribution flow, but uh, just uh, going through this uh, flow. So you can open an issue and make a proposal, then implement a new feature. Then uh, when you implement a new feature, it is important to include this kind of simple testing or example scene so that uh, developers can understand uh, what this new feature is about. Uh, of course, a readme file. Then open a pull request with a proper target branch. Then uh, address comments from the reviewers. Then finally, when it's approved, then it's going to be merged. Um, so in MRTK, we have multiple branches. So a master is our official release branch. Uh, it is always locked. Then we have monthly dev branch. So MRTK is a targeting kind of monthly release. So uh, we are uh, having this kind of dev branch for monthly release. So this is a kind of great target branch that you can uh, add a new feature or bug fix. And so that development branch is going to be a deprecated sometime soon because we have been adding, uh, using it for MRTK version next development. And MRTK version next is kind of new effort to make MRTK more flexible and modular and to support other uh, cross-platform cross devices. So when you visit MRTK, the GitHub, uh, you can find uh, this new effort under Project tab. Um, so yeah, I'm going to just skip this part. It's uh, the same floor of the contribution. 
then, so these are uh, great resources you can uh, start with uh, for building uh, apps for Win Windows Mixed Reality. So when you go to aka.ms slash MR, uh, you're going to see this, our Windows Dev Center. Uh, definitely, the Mixed Reality Academy is a great uh, place to start with. You can learn about the basic interaction concepts such as gaze, gesture, voice, spatial mapping, and spatial sound. And recently, we had a, a new tutorial series for uh, HoloLens and Azure machine learning. So you can uh, learn about the new examples about uh, how you can use HoloLens with uh, face recognition or machine learning and language understanding. Uh, there are really great examples. And you can find the new uh, develop and design guidelines. So our, the documentation has been updated to use a GitHub system, so you can easily uh, contribute or modify uh, the documentation. Um, so you can find all of this content on uh, my Medium article uh, called Open Source Building Blocks for Windows Mixed Reality Experiences. So I have written uh, this same content as a Medium post, so you can uh, reference it later. And uh, this is my Twitter handle. So if you have any questions and suggestions, uh, just let me know. Uh, thank you very much.